Hi, why cannot we parallel two generators unless they have a group setting? A question which has been haunting quite a few people for quite some time. The answer for this question can see at the end of this video. So for all those who are still left, because I'm sure a few of you have already jumped to the end of the video. Don't worry, they all come back because I am sure they wouldn't have understood. And one thing I can give you a guarantee that you will never be able to understand this video in one shot. You might have to see through it three, four times at normal speed or at reduced speed to get a good idea about what is happening. And uh, if you feel that you are going to understand one shot, you should be a superman. So for all those who are still left and you are continuing to watch, uh, let me welcome you back after a long time to this channel. You are saying Chief Engineer's Tea Time Talk. I am Ramesh, the friendly pilot who will take you through this channel. And if you had really understood the video, like the video, please do remember to subscribe and uh, enjoy the video. Thank you so much. Let us start with the basic function of a governor. You can see the governor control on the switchboard and we are going to do it manually for clarity and understanding. Here we see that uh, number one generator is running at 200 kilowatt load, 440 volt and 59.5 hertz frequency. We have the controls here where we can raise the generator frequency. So let's make it 60 hertz. So here we go. Let us call this knob as speed setting knob. If we want to fine tune the voltage, we can do so by increasing the strength of the field current. And here is the button for that. Now if we say, we started a ballast pump of 100 kilowatt load. Now the load obviously becomes uh, uh, 300 kilowatt. But the frequency and voltage and RPM of the generator fall down. This is undesirable. Hence we have a governor here which will quickly sense the drop of RPM and will increase the fuel rack till the RPM is restored. The AVR of course will take care of the field current and will restore the voltage. The frequency of course depends upon RPM and will automatically get restored to 60 Hertz. We need not adjust anything here. Whether we put a load or remove a load, the frequency in RPM will get restored back because of the governor. We also call this uh, governor as a isochronous governor. The point to be noted here is that at every load the generator is capable of running at the set RPM. Or rather the governor restores the RPM or the frequency back to the set point, whatever may be the load. Now suppose we start number 2 generator and want to parallel it with number 1 generator. Uh, here let us increase the frequency of incoming generator to say 60. Now we have closed the breaker and let's start increasing load on number 2 generator. You see that uh, to increase the load on number 2 generator I need to press this button which is actually the speed setting button. Seems easy, but actually there's a hidden problem. When we increase the load on number two generator, we are actually also increasing the RPM. As I already mentioned, and obviously number one generator loses load. Number one original frequency setting is still at 60 only. Now number one generator will try and bring the frequency down. Hence there is a real conflict. Both the generators being electrically locked. What will be the final bus bar frequency? Basically, we can see that there is no stability when we parallel two generators. They become very unstable and both will start hunting. Loads may shift drastically. In fact, one of the generator can also go into reverse power in extreme cases. There is no rule for the distribution of load amongst the two generators and there is only chaos. Obviously, you cannot imagine a watchkeeping engineer sitting there continuously 24 by 7 adjusting the load. Okay, now let's imagine another scenario. There's a box of candies and you have these two guys, Chotu and Bittu to share it. You tell them to share it. Now you can imagine what will happen, a chaos, a fight, grabbing, snatching. But suppose you make some rules for, for example, who will get how much? Say Chotu is to Bittu is equal to 3 is to 2 or 1 is to 1. They will have to share it according to this rule only. Now you can see that there is no chaos. There will be stability in the house. 
This is the same technique we are going to implement on the generators to create stability. Suppose we set rules in the governor that the generator can work only at a particular RPM when running at a particular load. That means we establish a unique and rigid relationship between load and RPM. Let's see what happens. Now we have number one generator running at 200 kilowatt load and 900 RPM, 60 hertz. If we put additional 100 kilowatt load, the generator can now run only at 893 RPM. The governor will bring back RPM of the generator only 893 and not 900. That is obviously slightly less frequency. It cannot restore it back to 60 always. Similarly, if we reduce the load on generator, the governor will maintain the RPM and frequency at higher values, not at 60. If we want the RPM to be 900 and 60 hertz, then we need to increase or decrease the speed setting knob, which effectively increases and decreases the fuel rack. After every change in load, this is what we call as a droop. We will elaborate its significance further later on. So sorry for the interruption. I just suddenly remembered that I should thank all of you people who have uh, uh, registered for the hydraulic courses, which I am conducting for the YouTube subscribers. Uh, we have already done five uh, for the basics and uh, two uh, advanced level courses. So for all of you who have actually registered and gone to the courses, a big thank you. Uh, I hope you all have benefited and for all those who contemplate to get uh, to register themselves, please uh, the details you can see in the description of uh, this particular video. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Continue to enjoy the video. Thank you. Let's start again. We have number one generator at 300 kilowatt at 60 hertz. Suppose we put a similar similar rule to number two generator. Now we have parallel data at 60 hertz. Number one generator load is equal to 300, generator number two load is equal to zero. Suppose we start putting load on number two and want it 50 kilowatts. Obviously, because of that rule, it will have to work at a frequency of say 59.8 hertz only. You see this droop curve, it is following this curve. Number two generator is 50, load on number one generator obviously has to be 250. But its frequency according to the rule, which is determined with a droop curve, has to be only say 60.2 hertz and nothing else. You can see that there is a conflict. This is impossible. Two generators running in parallel cannot be running at different frequencies and different RPMs. Not possible. When two generators are in parallel, they are electrically locked. We can see that if number one generator reduces its load, its frequency has to increase. No choice. So what exactly happens when we transfer load? Let's start all over again. Number one generator is now at 300 kilowatt, 60 hertz. Number two generator is at zero kilowatt, 60 hertz. You all know that to put load on number two generator, we press the speed setting knob. Once it start pressing this, the load starts increasing. But uh, you will soon understand why we press the speed setting knob. Now what has the speed setting knob got to do with load shifting? Let us press only knob for number two generator that is increase the speed setting of number two generator and see what happens. We see that as we press the speed setting knob, we are actually shifting the blue line, which is the frequency line for number two generator. We can also call it as a droop line. We are asking the frequency to go up. But as we had already discussed, number two generator is tied up to number one electrically and hence cannot run at different frequency. Both generators actually need to run at the same frequency which we call it as the bus bar frequency. So what is the way out? Well, the frequency of number two generator cannot independently go up, but something has to happen. The load on number two generator starts increasing. Now, because we have the droop curve, as the load increases, the frequency has to follow the droop curve. Another thing which is simultaneously happening is that since number two generator is increasing, load is increasing, number one generator load needs to decrease. Number one generator also needs to follow its own group curve. And as per the rule, you can see that as the load on number one generator decreases, the frequency increases of number one generator. Now the beauty is that the increase in frequency of number one generator because of group is decreased and is exactly the same as the increase of frequency of number two generator. So the bus bar frequency is increasing. 
if we want the bus bar frequency to come back to 60, we have to decrease the speed setting of both the generators simultaneously. Let us now make the load equal. We see that the frequency is again more and we can again bring it back to 60 by decreasing the speed setting of both generators simultaneously. You might have observed that all along I used the speed setting of number 2 generator only for increasing the load on number 2 generator. That is for getting clarity of fundamental principles. But in practice, in reality on the ship, we increase the speed setting of number 2 generator with a simultaneous decrease of speed setting of number 1 generator. The effect being the same. Transfer of load keeping the original frequency same. Now we can summarize the individual shifting of the load of any generator. It is not possible without the operation of speed control knob of one of the generators. You can see that the droop settings give us stability during parallel operation and uh, prevent inadvertent and automatic shifting of the loads between generators.